I'm Yanis. I'm Edwin. And we're in Falls and you're watching Mosh Camp. I've done about my first memory of music. Uh, my first sort of getting into like indie music, I guess, was probably when I was like, 11 or so. My older sister had loads of records and I used to borrow them and steal them. And um, I bought, well maybe it was bought for me, I can't remember, I got Park Park by Blur, that was the first record. And it, yeah, it took me a long time to actually understand the record because it, it was such a strange album. But from then on I, I got really into Britpop, a lot of bands. Like, um, Suede. I was never into Suede, the Blue Radleys. Um, and Gene, that band Gene, was really into them. And then it was like the Smiths, and then, and then I was lost forever. Mine was kind of similar as through, um, my older brother used to make me mix cassettes that had a lot of stuff that like a nine year old shouldn't be listening to, like um, <clears throat> Public Enemy and Wu Tang, and, but then there'd also be other stuff like Primal Scream was on it and The Spin Doctors. And my, my, the first song that I fell in love with was Two Princes by The Spin Doctors, uh, which I, I still think is a great track. And then I kind of got into Nirvana and The Offspring later, like a bit later, maybe a few years later when I was 12. And that was kind of the start of what I would consider to be an ongoing rebellion. <laughs> I played the recorder at primary school, uh, which was which I sucked at. I can't imagine that. Yeah. And then I remember <laughs> picking up, uh, my mum had like a classical guitar in the house. Um, just nylon string and I picked it up about the same time that I started listening to Nirvana and stuff and I just taught myself how to play. Um, it was pretty it was pretty bad, like I was pretty awful for a long time, but I got there in the end. I also like recorder at school, but like, again, I mean that was terrible. Just play like, um, it's kind of mandatory for kids to play recorder. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to progress into a real instrument. It was it was kind of a natural choice. Um, we we were really happy with the way that like Flood and Alan Mulder had produced Holy Fire, and we had. A, I remember like I called Flood to talk to him about, you know, when we started writing the next record, and it was kind of clear that we both felt like we shouldn't repeat it, you know, even though it was a good experience. And I think you know we've made every record with a different producer, so James has been kind of on the radar for a long time. You know, he's like pretty well known generally, and we we. We kind of exist in similar circles, you know, in, in London. And um, he also gets dance music and rock music, which I think was like pretty ideal for us because we kind of like to dabble in both. So uh, we just met up with him, and the, and the vibe was good. And we, we tried um, a couple of days out in the studio, and it felt really good. So it felt like a really natural choice to go with him, and, and he was awesome. He, he really helped this record come together. Um, I can only remember one, which what was, was that? well it was when James's um, girlfriend, oh yeah his wife, wife sorry, his, yeah. wife. his wife came to stay for a while and she, uh, we sort of had like a, what the magic mushroom tea, yeah she made some mushroom tea, she got very excited about it and it was very subtle but then suddenly it was 2 o'clock in the morning and we were, we were playing lots of banana grams, yeah, um, <laughs> this game for banana grams, which you fire. took really seriously. And I suddenly found that I was taking it really seriously and I was very entertained by the whole process. Two months. We were in France. We, we wrote from September till February in Oxford and then we went to France and we were there for two months. So from February till mid April we were done. Go, going away is like really good for being able to just focus on what's at hand, which is basically making the record. Um, it's good to just be out of like, you know, not be in constant contact with civilization. So we, we, we just lived in the studio and we just like worked and we built a rhythm up and it, it, it you know, it was good. I think um, it is definitely good to go away, at least for us, it's important. We've always had great shows here. like. It's definitely one of our favourite places to tour and particularly in this way where you're like with a group of bands and you travel around together. We did it um, with on Laneways like festival a few years ago and that was I think probably one of our fondest memories of touring was doing that and I think 
the lineup this year at Falls is awesome. There's a bunch of bands that we're really excited to to see and hang out with. So um, I think it's going to be it's going to be a good time. And I reckon, off the top of my head, the two my two favourite things I've seen live recently would be Jack White. I saw Jack White in Poland, and like I wasn't prepared to be as bowled over by as I was by his musicianship. Um, but like just the whole band and him were just on fire. And also, <clears throat> I got to see The Knife on their most recent tour, and that was a show that divided a lot of opinions. But I just thought it was incredible. I yeah. thought that like the effort that had gone into it and. It, it kind of just, um, I just got totally swept up in it when I was watching it and it was an incredible show, I thought. Uh, they would find about 100 gigabytes of really turgid deep house in mine that I'm ready to shed, ready to, to set that adrift. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my music's kind of littered with a lot of stuff that I have DJed in the past. A lot of it doesn't have the longevity of <laughs> At the moment, I've been listening to the Everything Everything album and Tim Impala and the new Sleaford Mods record, which is quite a listen. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know if they're known over here. Are they? Yeah. How about you? Um, I've just been listening to a lot of hip hop at the moment. I listen to. I really like this guy called Vince Staples, and I've been listening to his uh, one of his mixtapes called Shine Cold Chain and his new record, Summertime 06. I mean, we regularly get fans either telling us that they lost their virginity to our music or that our music has saved their lives, which I think is pretty intense. Um, and definitely the regularity with which we hear that is... I mean, it's kind of a really nice feeling to think that, you, that the music we make is that powerful or that um, influential in somebody's life, um, but it's definitely like pretty full on. Hey, we're Foles, and you can watch our interview from 2013 here. <laughs>